AMD Fedora FX SDK 2.0 represents a new suite of features starting with AMD FSR 4 upscaling and FSR 3.1.5 analytical frame generation. Oh! FSR 4 just got open source on GPU open. And that is great because it means that developers can actually implement FSR 4 now since they actually have the developer kit, thing that wasn't presented before. And we also have an announcement stating that in the upcoming driver versions of Adrenaline, you won't need AMD to whitelist FSR 4 anymore, meaning that any game that supports FSR 3.1 will be able to automatically upgrade it to FSR 4, which is great. But well, let's start with GPU Open saying AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 4 now available on GPU Open. And we have some highlights saying that the AMD Fidelity FX SDK version 2.0, which is the one that brings FSR 4, uh, includes our cutting edge machine learning upscaler FSR4, the new machine learning accelerated FSR4 upscaling algorithm is trained by using high quality ground truth game uh, on AMD Instinct and so on, so on, so on. So we have the things from FSR4, reduced ghosting and so on, and we have some examples that we can see here, which is one of the things that I like here on GPU Open. On the left, we have FSR 3.1 and on the right, we have FSR4. So as soon as you start sliding in, you can immediately see that the quality has vastly improved. For example, if you look at the ground, if you look at the foliage, if you look here at the foliage, you can see that we kind of have a kind of a smudge or a smeared feeling that happens here a lot. But while you when you go to FSR4, you can see that we have much more quality. Even on the textures here, for example, look at the pillar. As soon as we move to FSR4, Yeah, you can see that FSR 4 just delivers much better image quality. And we have zoomed in pictures, again, after, so FSR 3.1, and you can see that we have lots of ghosting here, we have lots of pixelation around the, well, especially in movement, because this is in movement, and as soon as you move to FSR 4, as you can see, the pixelation gets basically non-existent, and the ghosting gets treated, or let's say eliminated here, no more ghosting here, no more ghosting, as you can see. Much better quality. And the same goes for preservation of particle effects, which was one of the worst points of FSR 3, was the, the effects, the water effects, as you can see, lots of pixelation, just doesn't look good as soon as you move to FSR 4, bam, just much, much better. And these are, well, these are supposed to be here. Um, but you don't really have the pixelation here on the top. Yeah, the details are just preserved. It is what it is. Uh, now we have another example again. You can see that in terms of quality, it is considerably better, but especially in terms of detail preservation. Again, superior detail and temporal stability. And then we have another zoomed in picture. For example, if you look at the grills here of the metal, the metal grills, with FSR 3.1, we have kind of a smudged out image. As soon as we go to FSR 4, the grills detail gets way better preserved. As you can see, FSR 3.1, FSR 4, you can actually see the grills. Then we have simple API upgrade path. With the new release of AMD, FSR 4 continues to use AMD Fidelity FX API introduced in FSR 3.1, providing an easy upgrade path for developers or update path for developers. New features are exposed using the extensibility of Fidelity FX API. And now listen to this, sign DLLs as part of Fidelity FX Super Resolution SDK, um, Fidelity FX SDK 2.0 official releases, sorry to ensure stability and upgradability of the LLs, if allowed by an individual game releaser. So previously we didn't actually have the DLL per se, it just came with the drivers. We didn't have a DLL, a DLL version that we could download, it just came with the drivers. And now you actually have the DLLs, meaning that software like OptiScaler and any other developers working with it can just go and upgrade the DLLs inside the game. So this means you don't really need to wait AMD to whitelist on their drivers, then go to the driver, enable FSR4. You can just pick that DLL and upgrade the game yourself or wait for other things like the LSS Swapper to implement the, um, the FSR4 DLL inside the, the software and then just upgrade it. Much simpler if you ask me. And since AMD knows that 
many other softwares would do it, they now have the automatic update. With AMD FSR 4, future AMD Software Adrenaline Edition releases can update the version of FSR 4 upscaling used in-game to the latest version available by default. This ensures players experience the highest quality upscaling without requiring updates for each title. This means that, for example, um, let, let's say that the game supports FSR 4 or the DLL has FSR 4, 4.0.1. As soon as the software or the Adrenaline software detects that the game supports FSR 4, 4.0.1, but we currently have available FSR 4.1, for example, with FSR Redstone, you can just simply go and have the automatic updates of FSR 4 enabled, and it will automatically up, update or upgrade the game's DLL file for you, to enjoy FSR 4.1 instead of the previous FSR 4.0.1. And you might ask, well, how is that different from what we actually have now? Well, it is quite different since now FSR 4 is injected on top of FSR 3.1. And with these automatic updates, it seems that that isn't the case and uh, the software will just change the games, um, the game's DLL. I might be wrong, but it seems that way, or maybe they are just Again, injecting over it like the LSS does and the same for FSR 4, I don't really know. But it seems that way. Now, one thing that most people might have not noticed is that the super resolution version is now 4.0.2. We have the 4.0.0, which was the first version. Then we have the 4.0.1, which improved some of the, um, the fast basic movements. For example, FSR in terms of temporal stability, FSR 4 was very stable when we were looking, for example, in Spider-Man 2. You were looking at the buildings and it was stable, but as soon as you do kind of that fast movement, when kind of web slinging or something, or just doing that fast movement forward, what would happen is that you would have a momentary uh, shimmering and then it would kind of go into temporal stability again, then shimmering, then temporal stability and so on. With the 4.0.1 that was almost fixed, or I can almost say entirely fixed, and now we have 4.0.2, but we don't really have anything about the 4.0.2, so we don't really know what it improved. But again, it is now there. 4.0.2 that will most likely come with the next drivers instead of the 4.0.1. Now you have these two specifically, which are interesting. So these two topics, and let's go to the, to the super resolution. And as you go into the super resolution, you can see two things. You can see that AMD FSR 4.0.2 initial release as part of the Fidelity FX SDK and so on also includes AMD FSR 2.3.4 and FSR 3.1.5. So we went into in terms of upscaling, we went from 4.0.1 to 4.0.2 and we went from FSR 3.1.4 to FSR 3.1.5 saying fix for possible negative RCAS output. And we also have frame interpolation swap chain, basically frame generation 3.1.5, which fixes out the comment list, the comment lists crash if create swap chain bigger than two frames of latency. Hmm. And using non async frame interpolation and fixes an old tab deadlock scenario when frame generation is enabled. Maybe this means that frame generation X3 and X4 is coming for AMD. Maybe, I don't really know, but it would be interesting. And now we have Unreal Engine 5 plugins for FSR 4 as well. So basically everything is here and we have more things regarding FSR Redstone. So what's changed? And we have the AMD Fidelity FX SDK 2.0 marks a turning point in our software offerings to developers. Firstly, we have in an effort to better streamline AMD FSR Redstone and other future machine learning based technology deployments, our existing Fidelity FX SDK features will continue to be available as version 1.1.4. And now we have the AMD Fidelity FX SDK 2.0 represents a new suite of features starting with AMD FSR 4 upscaling and FSR 3.1.5 analytical frame generation, which have been re-architected in preparation for the next generation of AMD hardware and machine learning based technologies, meaning that we now have FSR 3.1.5 um, frame generation, which somehow is called analytical frame generation, which is supposed to be better and uh, it was made in order to be upgradable, I suppose, 
to the new machine learning type that will be released. So the new machine learning frame generation that will be released with FSR Redstone. With AMD Fedora FX SDK 2.0 and AMD FSR Redstone, future AMD Software Adrenaline Edition driver releases can update the version of machine learning based technologies used in game by default. This ensures that players experience the latest available technology without requiring updates for each title. And this means that we can not only upgrade FSR for upscaling through the app, through the Adrenaline app with automatic updates, but we can also do it for frame generation, meaning that we are able to get uh, machine learning upscaler and machine learning frame generation through the adrenaline automatic updates the same way that we have on the Nvidia side, which is great. And as I stated before in my previous video, games which have previously integrated AMD FSR 3.1.4 will be legible for automatic version upgrades to our upcoming FSR 4 machine learning frame generation technology via future AMD software adrenaline edition releases. Again, we can now update or upgrade, upscaling and frame generation on the AMD side as well. Great. And as for FSR 3.1.5, AMD FSR 3.1.5, available in the Fidelity FX SDK 2.0, is a minor update for the new SDK, and FSR 3.1.5 upscaling is included for support of AMD Radeon RX 7000 series cards and older. They don't really specify what they are upgrading or what is better, the same way that they didn't specify anything for FSR 4.0.2. But yeah, it is something new, FSR 3.1.5, it is here, and it is supposed to be better, somehow. And when going here to the bottom, it seems that the images that we were uh, comparing before, they were already comparing it with FSR 4.0.2 instead of 4.0.1, which is the current version that we have now, and yeah, it is definitely much better, but I would really like to, to see what they what was really improved compared to the 4.0.1 uh, when going to the 4.0.2. But yeah, now we have requirement with supported GPUs with AMD FSR 4.0.2 upscaling for the RX 9000 series GPUs and above, sadly, again. Uh, we have FSR 3.1.5 upscaling again, supporting GPUs with shader model 6.2 or above, and AMD FSR 3.1.5 frame generation GPU supporting shader model 6.2 or above, the same as the FSR 3.1.5 upscaling. So yeah, it seems that we have lots of new things coming. FSR 4.0.2 that will most likely come with the next drivers, 25.8.2 or 25.9.1. We also have FSR 3.1.5 instead of FSR 3.1.4, which we don't really know what improves compared to the previous versions, the same for FSR 4.0.2. And we have FSR 3.1.5 analytical again, analytical frame generation, which will be the base again for the new machine learning frame generation that AMD will, will release with AMD FSR Redstone. Awesome. So that's all for today's video, guys. Don't forget, comment in the comment section what you think about the new improvements. I will, of course, be here testing the new improvements, as always, on the AMD side and on the, on the NVIDIA side as well. Uh, by the way, I will also be doing a video of the NVIDIA smooth motion frames, basically, uh, compared to AFMF 2.1, for example. Uh, I'll be testing that technology as well, especially now that we have global overrides together for all games in terms of the LSS and the LSS frame generation, which was one of the things that I was missing the most on the NVIDIA app. Finally there, uh, I'll be testing it with a 4070 Super since Smooth Motion now works with the RTX 40 series, which is great. But again, I'll be here testing everything that will come from the NVIDIA and the AMD side. Leave your comment in the comment section telling me what you think about FSR 3.1.5, if it is a good addition, if it will be better or not, and in a couple of days I believe that I'll be testing it since the LSS Swapper will most likely integrate it as soon as possible, and the same for OptiScaler and so on. Thank you very much for watching this video, leave your comment in the comment section, by the way, and by the way, let me know what you think FSR 3.1.5 analytical frame generation is. I'm really eager to see what it is. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.